Hi everybody, Scott Frankowski here, Head West Photos. Today I am recording on the Lumix LX10 compact camera with a one inch sensor. Uh, I'm going to see how this works out. And I'm going to be talking about the pros and the cons of this camera as well as showing you some pictures that I've taken with the LX10. See what you think of them. Uh, you can see the quality of them, what this camera is capable of. I think this is a great camera. It's a great small camera. It's great for travel. You can get pretty decent pictures in low light situations uh, if you have some patience with it and know how to use it properly. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of this camera. Starting out with the pros. First of all, this is a small camera. It's lightweight, you can easily pocket it. Um, and it, even though it is pretty small and lightweight, it still feels like it's well made. It doesn't feel cheap. So I had another Lumix camera, the uh, ZS70, I believe. Same kind of form factor, uh, much smaller sensor in that camera. And that one just felt a lot more cheaply made. It was, it was a lot cheaper camera. Uh, the LX10 retails for $699, I believe, new, whereas the ZS70 retails new for $350 or $400. So, I mean, just quite the price difference. That's not knocking the ZS70. It just felt cheaply made compared to the LX10. Um, you can pick up this LX10 for 300 on eBay, a good, excellent condition, uh, used LX10, about 300 to 350 I paid 350 um, for this one. It was advertised as only used once. Who knows if that was the case. Uh, from a used store, you could probably find this for $399 or so, $400. So, small, lightweight, yet sturdy camera. Uh, it has this nice flip-up screen, uh, which you can't see, obviously, because I'm filming on this camera. Uh, it works awesome. This is awesome having a monitor. It has a 1.4 aperture at its widest. Now, you only get that 24 millimeters. After that, it quickly goes down to 2.8 once you start zooming out, but 1.4 is awesome. Um, now it is a small sensor, so you're not gonna blow out an image like a 1.4 on a full frame camera. It's different different types of sensors. You do, however, get the, the light gathering capabilities of that 1.4, even with this small sensor. So the exposure doesn't change based on aperture, but the depth of field does. So the 1.4, on this camera, it has an equivalent depth of field of a f4 on a full frame camera. That can work for you. Um, I mean, not if you're trying to blow out a scene, but um, you just get a lot more depth of field, which which can be handy. Um, bringing in all that light, but also having a pretty wide depth of field uh, can be pretty nice for like. Um, Oh, for landscapes, especially landscapes at like sunset, some low light situations. It works out pretty well. Um, the image quality overall, I think, is pretty fantastic. I think you got to work with the camera a little bit to get really good image quality. But I've taken some good pictures on this. And I'll show you some of those in just a minute. Image quality, definitely a plus. Uh, that one inch sensor really uh, is a step up from something like the... Uh, was it the one over 2.3 inch sensors in like the FZ80 that I've reviewed and smartphone chips, those sorts of things. So having that one inch sensor really does add something to it. Um, you get the full kind of professional Lumix suite of options and features in this camera. It has the 4K photo, 4K video, uh, HD video, slow motion, um, time-lapse, multi-exposure, all the different scenes. So it comes with that kind of full Panasonic suite. It has uh, the internal mic. Panasonic seems to do pretty decent internal microphones. Um, and we'll see. I'm, I'm only recording on the internal mic. So we'll see how it sounds. Uh, and I'm pretty close. I'm about two and a half feet from the camera. Uh, I think it'll sound decent enough. Now let's get to the negatives. First major negative is that there's no viewfinder on this camera. It is what it is. It's such a small form factor. I think they could have fit one in similar to how the Sony RX100 series does. They got the little pop out one. 
Uh, it is what it is. Now when I'm using the camera, I'm not really ever like wishing I had it. Even in bright light, the screen seems to do pretty good. You can move the screen around to kind of if there's glare or anything like that. So that, it, it works without using a viewfinder, but if you need a viewfinder, if that's a must have for you on a camera, you're gonna have to look at one of the competitor's cameras. The aperture ring on this, at first I thought it was really cool to have the aperture on the ring uh, around the lens. I'd honestly just rather have a dial on the front. What I wish they would have done on this camera is put a little dial on the front of it that you could just assign to whatever you want to. That'd also be nice if you wanted to assign it to ISO or something like that. Um, but there is no front dial. Instead, you just have the aperture ring around the lens. Um, it works fine. I wish it moved like it was easier to move. You got kind of usually you got to use more than one finger. You can't just move it with your thumb. You can, but you got to put some force into it. Um, so I wish that moved a little smoother. What sucks about having the aperture ring right around the lens is it also has just a assignable ring right next to the aperture ring. Um, and I've had that set on ISO before so I could just move the ISO with that. But whenever I change aperture, it, the assignable ring that's right next to it is so sensitive it always moves the ISO. So I've just taken, um, I've just left it unassigned. So is what it is. If you just had a little control dial on the front of the camera uh, where the hand grip is, it would solve a lot of issues, I think. Um, so I, I'm not a fan of the aperture ring. There is no mic input. I don't know. It, it'd be awesome if there was a little hot shoe mount with a mic input. That would make this camera like a really awesome camera. Um, and they're just not, but you know, it doesn't seem like that would be too much to add to it. Maybe it is, maybe it's hard to get those components in to this, such a small form factor. Uh, and I guess, you know, having a hot shoe would, you couldn't do it on top because the screen flips up to the top. So maybe that's why they didn't do it there. Um, I don't know what the solution would be, but it'd be nice if there's a mic input and and a hot shoe. I guess you could have a flip out screen instead of a flip up screen. Um, so maybe in a revision, if they ever, I don't think that they'll ever revise this camera. I think this camera segment is kind of dying with smartphones taking over, which is too bad. I really like this segment of compact cameras. They're fun. They have cool features. It's cool to see the technology kind of evolve with these cameras. You can get really good pictures. Um, but alas, I think smartphones are kind of killing this market. We'll see though. Um, I mean, Sony came out with their RX100 Mark 7 a year ago, less than a year ago or so. Um, another negative, there's no control over the built-in microphone. So I didn't, unless I'm just missing it, but I was trying to find a way to control the gain. You can control the wind noise reduction. I'm not sure exactly what that does, if it just... I don't know, phases wind noise or something and makes it kind of, it doesn't seem to work that well, so whatever. Um, but it'd be nice to have some control over the audio, some preamp uh, gain setting in there. That'd be nice. So how does this compare? What what are the comparison cameras to this? The Sony RX100 Mark IV, I think would be, Mark IV or Mark V is probably the best comparison in the same price range. Now obviously there's a Sony RX100 Mark VI, Mark VII. Those are going to be a lot more expensive, double the price. But the Mark IV is, uh, on the used market, you can find them for around three to three fifty, four hundred dollars or so. So that's a competitor that has the viewfinder. Um, image quality wise, they're going to be very similar. I don't see that one would necessarily edge out another. Um, yeah, the Canon G7X Mark II, that's a close competitor. Uh, around the same price, so now they have the Mark III out, which is going to be more expensive, but the G7X Mark II is about the same price as this. Looks like a similar feature set. It's going to be a good camera. 
uh, the G9X Mark II, the Canon G9X Mark II. Uh, not quite in the same league, I would say. It doesn't have a flip-up screen. I don't think it has 4K video as well. I'd have to check the specs on it. Um, but it's in that same kind of realm of one inch sensor compact cameras. All right, um, with all that said, let's let's just look at some photos that I shot with the LX10 and I'll just show you why I think are some of my best photos that kind of show off the capabilities of this camera. So just pulling up some photos from the LX10 here. This was shot in downtown Miami in August of uh, 2019, um, pretty basic shot, I don't know that, you know, it would require larger sense or anything. I don't know that you would get this level of detail, uh, with a smartphone, um, and you know, I'm using the iPhone 7, uh, so pretty old, outdated, um, and I'm sure the iPhone 12 Max with the larger 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, um, it would probably be comparable and get the same type of just kind of um, simple bright situation uh, photo like this um, but I just I like the shot another one downtown Miami here uh, my wife and I went on a cruise to the Bahamas so we were in Miami for a day um, we got invited to a friend's wedding uh, that was on the boat um, so we thought that would be a good excuse to go take a little family vacation. Um, um, looking in though, again, you see that detail. Lots of really good detail with this camera, with this sensor. Um, and just an awesome, the Leica lens on this camera too. Really, really does it. Um, this board kind of shows off what this ca camera is capable of. Um, this was actually on the cruise ship. Um, and I was just walking around at night and um, took a shot off the back of the cruise ship. Held the shutter open for seven seconds. There's these thunderstorms in the distance. So wide open aperture at 1.47 second shutter. Kept that ISO way down. Um, and it looks pretty decent. Now I was you know, not hand holding this, but I wasn't using a tripod or anything. So I just had this set on a, um, metal railing and was just trying to be as steady as I could, uh, in the bulb mode. So just holding the shutter down, um, until I saw a lightning bolt and then I would let the shutter up. Um, but cool shot with the kind of motion blur, um, on the water from the ship and clouds kind of Blurred too. I like that. Um, this is just kind of the quintessential travel picture. Uh, really what this camera was made for. I could take it off the boat. Um, we landed here on this island that's, I guess, like a privately owned island by the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. Um, and it's, you know, free food and drinks and all that, which is uh, nice of them. Beautiful weather. Uh, my beautiful wife there, um, yeah, just kind of showing off, like, this is what you use this camera for. So when we were in Nassau in the Bahamas, um, I just like the shot really more than anything else. Pretty kind of typical shot of the Bahamas there. <clears throat> Lighthouse in the Bahamas, and again, you see the detail that this lens and this sensor provides. I don't know that you would probably get this using a smartphone camera in this level of sharpness. Possibly, I, I don't think so though. So this was shot at f2.8. So that's an equivalent aperture of f8 on a full frame camera. So you get that light gathering capabilities, um, but also you get just a huge depth of field because of the smaller sensor. sensor. Um, I could have, so you see these rocks here are a bit out of focus, so I could have stopped down a bit more because, uh, the shutter was only open for one twenty five hundredth of a second, so very fast shutter speed, uh, so I could have brought that aperture way down to 
f8 which would be an equivalent of uh, f24 on a full frame camera and everything would have been precisely in focus and probably really sharp but i just wasn't thinking I just saw a lighthouse and wanted to get a picture everything looks good in this picture <clears throat> oh, zoomed all the way in here another picture of that same lighthouse and again you see the sharpness of the lens uh, right on top there there's some like little red fringing um, if I go way in zoomed in at 300 percent and you see this like red fringing on top of that lighthouse I mean not a big deal even at 100 percent can't really see that too much um, good colors and of course this is edited um, but good colors the um, resort looks nice back there. A little shipwreck on the little peninsula here. Lots of detail. I'm at f2.8, one five thousandth of a second. So again, stopping down more would have increased my depth of field a whole lot more and kept everything sharp, sharper throughout. Focus point here was kind of in the middle frame on that lighthouse. <clears throat> Here's one in El Paso in January of uh, this past year, January 2020. Um, these winter storms kind of roll in through in, you know, winter storm as in it gets down to like 40 degrees in El Paso. Um, but they bring all the clouds with them and bring these lower clouds that kind of hang out on the mountains. Um, the mountain over here. Uh, this probably tops out about 4,500 feet, probably just under 5,000 feet. Uh, and this peak here is about, uh, that's about 10, 10 miles away from where, from my location, uh, where I'm shooting this photo. Over here, it goes up to about 5,500 feet. So you can see that cloud, cloud base is in at 5,000 feet and covering the top of this uh, part of the Franklin Mountains here. Um, so... So cool shot. You see a lot of detail in the clouds. Highlights are pretty easy to control with the larger sensor. Uh, you get some good good contrast in them. <clears throat> now I think a photo like this really shows off what this camera can do and where I think th this type of photo separates the one inch sensor cameras from th something like a smartphone. Um, just holding the shutter open here 10 seconds. So I was doing just a uh, 10 second um, time lapse. So just repeatedly taking 10 second shots here as the sun was, it was already set, but leaving the shutter open for so long, let a lot of that color still come in from the sunset. Uh, so I had a thunderstorm here and just was running a time lapse of 10 second shots and looking through for the ones that had some lightning. So yeah, this looks good. The lightning looks real sharp. There's a lot of interesting detail in the clouds where you do see some, if you see these like little green splotches here. So that's, I don't know, bad pixels on the sensor. Something's causing those to kind of flake out there. <clears throat> a similar one. So again, we have this lightning shot. Um, same setup, a 10 second shutter was open for 10 seconds. Just sharp, looks really good. <clears throat> and then this was from just the other night, uh, Christmas Eve uh, 2020. Um, the Orion constellation was coming up over the horizon here. And I wanted to catch that. So we have the Franklin Mountains here, Orion up here um this really impresses me that this camera can get this shot this well shutter open for 10 seconds and you can see the stars look great this is uh the star cirrus 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 here um brightest star in the sky about eight and a half light years away uh looks really good we have rigel rigel something like that a uh, huge star 23 solar masses um one of the brighter stars in the sky. You can see the Orion Nebula here. This little blur is about 12 light years across, which is pretty cool. Camera's picking up that well. We can see Betelgeuse here. Betelgeuse is a huge star, about 21 solar masses. 
we were to set it in our solar system, its orbit would extend past uh, Jupiter. So massive, huge star with a huge oh, circumference. Um, but yeah, this photo looks good. The detail in the mountain looks good. There's something going on right here, some kind of lens, lens flares. Um, the lights look horrible. So you can see all these, per there's maybe some of these are purple, like Christmas lights, but a lot of these are just street lights where there's a lot of fringing going on. So I don't like that at all, but the sky looks just fantastic. Um, I think for a small compact camera to be able to do astrophotography is pretty awesome. And in another video I'm going to do, I took a very similar shot with my um, Sony a7R 4 So we'll compare to see how they look if the one inch sensor camera can compare to uh, a full frame high resolution camera like that we'll see anyways those are some of my favorite photos i've taken with the um the lumix lx10 uh that's it for this video hopefully if you're thinking about this camera this gave you some insight into that camera and maybe some other competitors to consider all right everybody um, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, take care, bye.